Now, one thing I want to say here before I go into the word, spiritual temperature. How does God measure your spiritual temperature? Somebody may say, I don't know, but let me tell you how he does. Medical doctors and medical practitioners here know that for you to take the temperature of anybody, you will look at what? The blood pressure, is it not? What else do you look for? The pulse, thank you. What else? The respiration. You look at the sugar level too, isn't it? To see whether the sugar level is, uh, is normal. Is that not true? Now, when all these things are not negative and they are positive, or, or, or I don't know, whichever way, that is your pen here. Man. You see? What would you say? You will give those people a clean health of what? Eh? A clean bill of, thank you. You see, God wants to give you a clean bill of health today. And he will do so in Jesus' name. But how does God measure? Number one, Matthew chapter 6, verse 2. He says, when you give, when you do what? When you give. Matthew chapter 6, verse 5 to 6. He says, when you pray, these are the ways God measures your what? Your spiritual what? <laughs> Temperature. The last one is that in Matthew chapter, same chapter 6, verse 16, said, when you fast, it's not if, it is what? When. The first one is when you do what? When you give, when you pray, and when you do what? Let me tell you, that is what God uses. Why am I saying this? Our general verse here says we should fast. Please be part of it. You see, one thing about fasting is that you may think you are doing it for anybody. No. Fasting is primarily for our own empowerment. Opportunity for your change of story and level comes when you decide to partake in fasting. And one thing I notice about fasting, according to Isaiah 58 verse 6, is it breaks yoke. Long problem over the years. What does fasting does? It breaks it. And it makes to live an overcomer's life. If you look at Luke 10, 19, nothing will, when you fast, it does not hurt. Many of us think it will hurt us. No, it only empowers you. You want to reign in life? You want victory? You want a major turnaround? Be part of it. Psalm 110 verse 1 to 2 says, to reign in the midst of your enemies, you need what? You need to fast. You need to fast. But my prayer is that our fasting will profit. It will profit us in the name of Jesus. And your life will never remain the same in Jesus' name. Okay, let's go into today's... Um, open your Bible with me, please, if you have one. I'm reading Psalm 126, verses 1 to 4, and we can read it together. The theme for this month is the great turnaround. And my title... The title is Battle for Your Turnaround. What did I call it? You see, if you look at God, he wants to give you the best. But there is always a battle. Uh, somebody says, if wishes were horses. He said, even beggars would begin to say, I wish, I wish, I wish. And you begin to say, say beggars will say, uh -uh. if that is all it means to, then I will, the beggars too will write. But that is not the truth. There is nothing often times that God gives to you that comes on a platter of gold. Oh, you say this pastor is speaking heresy. No, I'm not. If you get it, it is because Jesus Christ already paid for it. In America, is there any free meal? Mm -mm. If they tell you it's free, know that somebody is doing what? <laughs> he is picking up the bill. Ah, you get to somebody, say, buy one, do what? <laughs> Some will even get, get three for free. And when you get to that point, don't think it is free. I went to one suit where they sell suit one day. <laughs> when I had buy one, get two. Ah, I said what? When I got there, I said what is the price of? It? They said one thousand two. I said ah, indeed. <laughs> uh, if it is one thousand two, that is for one suit. Uh, then you can always have uh, two as what? <laughs> as extra. But it doesn't. Move. When they tell you that, uh -uh. Uh, they are packaged everything. 
Praise the name of the Lord. Now, let's read together. It says, when the Lord turned again, what? Captivity of who? Zion. We were like them, the dream. Verse 2, it says, then was our mouth filled with laughter. Your mouth will be filled with laughter. And our tongue with singing. The Lord will bless you with a new song. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord had done great things. That will be your portion in Jesus' name. Verse 3 says, the Lord had done great things for us. You are testifying. You are going to testify. You will stand here and say, the Lord has done great things for me. We, whereof we are glad. Verse 4, look at what it says there. I said, turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams of the south. Brethren, last week we were looking at men who had positive turnaround in their life. For example, Abraham, an idol worshiper who suddenly became who? A worshiper of God. We looked at Moses, a fugitive, a murderer who became a deliverer. Ruth, a lonely woman who lost her husband and suddenly she, be, but she was married to a, a multimillionaire. Of course, Rahab, a prostitute, a harlot with questionable character. But he became one of the descendants through which our Lord Jesus Christ came from. Of course, David, the ignored young man who was at the backside of the desert, keeping what? A sheep. Suddenly, when God was looking for a man to trust, to commit something of value, of value to, he looked for him in the bush. The priest, the prophet said, we will not sit until he comes. Let me tell you, the people that have your miracle, the people that have what will make life beautiful for you, they will not sit until you'll arrive. I said they will not sit until that thing gets into your hand. In the mighty name of Jesus. Of course, we look at Esther, an orphan, refugee, who later became the beautiful king, queen of a king in another land. Of course, Zacchaeus, a crook, a cheating crook, the head of all crooks, you know. <laughs> uh, yet, God did something. He brought salvation, he visited uh, no matter how your story is in life, God is visiting you in Jesus' name. But one thing I want us to know is that God wants to help you. God wants to help me. God wants to give me a great turnaround. But some of these things don't just come like that. You may say, what, what is pastor saying? That is the truth. The battle for your turnaround is a real one. Many of us when we were young, even though you didn't know who you were, your parents took you to the herbalist. They took you to the witch doctor. They could see where? Into your future. In fact, some of them said some things about you that the mind of your parents were saying, is this what this child will become? That was the same story of Samson. Before he arrived at all, an angel came. God spoke. He said, this child ah, is a what? It's a special child. Whether Samson now was able to achieve those things is history today. Because God may say, this is what I want for you. But what you want at times may derail you. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? What you desire, like Samson, all he could see is what? Women. Women. Get this one for me. The father said, ah, ah. In this place we are, can't you even go see one? He said, no, it is that one, that one, that one there, <laughs> with that red hair, uh, which size uh, 12. Uh, si I mean, he gave all the statistics. Brethren, there is battle for your turnaround. There are forces of darkness contending for your turnaround. It is God's plan for you to experience great turnaround. He wants you to multiply. He wants you to be fruitful. He wants you to be successful. He wants you to be a millionaire. Oh, you may say, but uh, nobody has been a millionaire. It makes no difference. God will single you out and make you a millionaire. He wants you to be healed. Oh, in my house, people are always sickly. Mm -mm. God is saying, no, that is not your own portion. Because I want to do what? I know of some people, they will tell you in our house, people don't get to the age of 40. Yeah, somebody testified that they never knew they would live up to 40. But here, I wish to take Some of them are past 40. 
fifth, sixth. Why? Because their case is what? Is different. Don't you ever believe that lie of the devil. Don't you? The Bible says, whose report will you believe? Many of us, when we go for what? Medical checkup, just like I told you. The first thing the doctor will be asking you, uh, who has warapa in your house? Who has uh, this? Who has that? And then you too foolishly say, hey, I remember my uncle, by this, they will just put you as I said, this one is a special case. <laughs> uh, by the time the fellow is giving you medication, what will he say? He said, because you have said in your this that <laughs> somebody ran mad some time ago. Somebody had seizure. Somebody did it. You too. You are, is that not what they say? No, they follow from your history. They will just say, you too, you are likely. If you say, you are, if you say your mother was diabetic or somebody was there is nothing you want to tell that doctor. He's going to begin to look at you with one eye that ah, this one too don't carry. And when they tell you, fear comes into your heart, what would you be saying? You say, hmm, what killed my, what killed this? What ki I had somebody I was talking to. And he told me last day alone, he lost three people from his family from cancer. So, each time he talked to him, I said, well, it's a matter of time. I said, what is a matter of time? And now, this is the way people, brain leaves. Because that is the way the devil wants to program you that what has happened to people before you will happen. It's a lie. What did I say? It's a lie. But if you bite into it, if you buy into it, what happened? It will come. Job said, what I feared most has finally happened. No. Reject it. I said, do what? Because there is battle for your turn around. Let's quickly look at what the Bible says. John 10, 10. What does it say? He said, I, he said, the thief cometh not, but to do what? To steal, to kill, and to, he said, but what I desire for you is that you may have what? So you see the position of God. The position of God is that you may have what? Life in a what? In abundance. Let's open briefly and read Genesis 26. In Genesis 26 is the story of a young man called Isaac. It was God's plan to bless Isaac. It was God's plan to increase and turn around Isaac's situation. So that when there was famine, he said, don't go down to where? Egypt. Why was he going to go down to Egypt? Because his father, Abraham, equally did something like that. You understand? Don't go down there. But one thing I want to bring out is that but <clears throat> whether the fulfillment of Isaac just, it didn't come on a platter of gold. It was contested. Please turn to your neighbor. Say your blessing will be contested. Your turnaround will be contested. In those days when we were in school, when they said this one carried first, this one carried first, uh, this one carried, you know, even though you've been friend before, what happened? People begin to judge too for what? What that position? That, ah, this fellow who had what? He doesn't have two heads. So, whether you like it or not, that false position, everybody too is what? Yeah, even in your place of work, when they say this is the best what? Worker of what? Of the month. Say, eh. And they even have a place where they park. Is that not? You, say, ah, you two you say, okay, this fellow is the one today. It's my turn tomorrow. What are you trying to do? You want to put that fellow, whether you like it in your heart, you are putting that fellow aside. In other words, the position of that fellow is under what? Contention. And I want you to know that very well. What happened to this fellow? There was no fulfillment without a battle. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 16, it said, a great door effectual is open unto who? Me. He said, but there are what? Many adversaries. There are what? Many The enemy of his turn around, that is of Isaac, they fiercely resisted him. Every effort of Isaac at digging a well, what did they do? They shut it down. Even the well his father dug, you know what they did? In those days, when, you, when people want to mess you around, they will put dead animals or everything that is and 
they will fill it, they will put it so that you don't go back there to want to draw water. This was exactly what they did. They did the first, they did the second. You know, they stole his well, they vandalized some and even chased him away and told him, look, get out of this place. But instead of him being discouraged, what did the Bible say? He kept on doing what? Digging. He met with strife. He met with contention. He met with opposition. Genesis 26, 20 to 20 told us that God eventually now gave him one. And he now said, now this is what? Rehoboth. Is that not what the Bible says? He said this is what? Rehoboth. You know that what? God has given us what? Rest. Brethren, I pray for you. Powers contending for your well of great turnaround. They will be scattered today. I pray again. I say, power contending for your well of joy. They will be scattered today in Jesus' name. One thing about Isaac was that he overcame. You will also overcome in Jesus' name. He started in defeat, but he became triumphant. You will triumph in Jesus' name. You also will overcome every power contending with you in the name of Jesus. Turn around does not come on a platter of gold. You can turn things around by prayer, by fasting, by giving. God has destined you for great turn around, but you must contend for that battle. Deuteronomy 2.24 tells us when God told the children of Israel after they left Egypt, he said, look, I have given this fellow to you. He said, rise up, take your journey, and pass over the river Anon. Behold, I have what? Given into your hand Sion, the Amorite, king of and his land. You see, when God speaks, he step, he makes sure that you understand. But look at it, step, but begin to do what? How? By contending for it. I read international politics, I mean international relations. There is what they call contending theories. You contend for what belongs. Brethren, you have to fight for what belongs to you. The devil will not allow you to rest if you don't forcefully take what belongs to you. The Bible said something. He said the what? Take it by force. Who are the people? Be violent. Take it by what? By force. You must violently take what belongs to you. Or else, I'm telling you, it's not going to come. Up. Even though God has given it to you. For example, in this land now, I know many of us, when we came, we thought, oh, by the time I get to hit this place, uh, all the trouble, all the distance will just be gone. Is that not true? That the money will just be, mm, I will just be counting. <laughs> but when you got here, you saw that uh -uh, this is another ball game. These people will make you run crazy if you don't know what you are doing. I was talking to somebody. He said, look, pastor, it's like they have turned my day into what? <laughs> my night into what? Day. Because all he does is what? Night shift. When everybody is, their eyes are closed, I mean open, eh? and enjoy something, that is when his own eyes are what? Are closed. When, when the Bible says you should be sleeping, that's when they are what? They are weak. In other words, everything about their system, one way or the other. And here, uh, when they pay you the dollar, don't think it is a, uh, there are cameras, even though the owner was not there. I went to a shire, the tire shop there. He said the man, uh, with all due respect, is an able man. He said, do you know that there are 24? He said, 24 what? Cameras. I said in this, uh, he said, you won't know where he put it. As you are collecting any, where you put it, everything. <laughs> he said, do you know one thing? He said, he employed one person. All that fellow is doing is what? Looking at the camera. Not where, all the way, they live in Riverdale. He said, all that one is doing is monitoring. He said, one day somebody came in the middle of the night, said he wanted tire. He didn't know he came to steal the jack. He said, but by the time he went, he was in her size, this size, that. He said, the guy just lifted the thing and drove off. He said, even though they saw it in the camera, that it was not him, he said they still collected the money from him. But I'm praying for you. God will give you rest. I say, God will give you rest. 
God will give you rest. God will give you rest. He will turn your situation around for good in the name of Jesus. Remember the prophecy that Daddy Gio gave to us 2020. He said it will be a year of series of joy. It will be a year of series of victories. Ah, your victory is coming in the name of Jesus. He said because it will be a year of series of joy and victory, it will also be a series of what? Battle. But you will overcome. It will be victory after victory. Shout of joy after shout of joy. But you must pray. Judges chapter 6, 1 to 8 was what I shared during the first service. And I want to say a bit about it to you during this second service. If you have your Bible, please open to Judges. But the way I treated it then was, is not what I'm going to do now. Look at Judges chapter 1 verse 8. Can we read it together? And it says, Then the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. So the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Midian for how many years? Seven years. Number two, and the hand of the Midian prevailed. Ah, the hand of the enemy will not prevail over your life. Because of the Midianite, the children of Israel made for themselves the dens, the caves, and the stronghold, which are in the mountain. Verse 3 says, So it was whenever Israel had sown, planted, the Midianites will come. The Amalekites will come. The people of the east will come. Just to do what? To take it. Verse 4. Then they will encamp against them and destroy the produce of the earth as far as Gaza and leave no sustenance for Israel. Neither sheep, nor ox, nor donkey. Verse 5 says, For they will come up with their livestock and their tents, coming in as numerous as locusts. Both they and their camels were without number, and they will enter in the land and do what? Everything destroying your harvest. I come against them today in Jesus' name. Everything destroying your turnaround. I come against them today in Jesus' name. Look at verse 6. So Israel was greatly what? Impoverished because of the Midian and the children of Israel. Now, what did they do? You see, when you get to the point when you cry, even a mother, when she sees the child crying, Abba, what happened? Even as old, you know I said the elders should stand up. You know, even as old as they are, and even their children, if anything that can cause pain come to them, do you know they will cry? Do you know they will cry? They will. Because they feel helpless that, ah, I wish I could help this child. Look at what the Bible says. He said, but they cry to who? To God. Look at what verse 7 now says. If they cry to God. And it came to pass, when the children of Israel did what again? Cried out to the Lord because of the Midian. Verse 8 now says that the Lord sent what? A prophet to the children of Israel. Who said to them, and say that to yourself. Just says the Lord, God of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt and brought you out of it. Did you see what? He brought you what? The first one is what? Up. And then brought you what? Out. My prayer is that God will do something tangible in your life today in Jesus' name. Now, the Israelites were under severe oppression. That's one thing you must note. And the oppression led to bondage. The same oppression led to defeat instead of victory in verse 2. The same oppression made them to live in perpetual fear. The Bible says they were hiding in what? In caves. The same oppression led to constant harassment and intimidation by forces that is higher than them. The same oppression led them to an ending lamentation and murmuring. They planted, but the Midianites will come and do what? They will harvest. They couldn't eat what they have planted. They couldn't enjoy the fruit of their labor. This oppression brought them very low. There is somebody here. You talk when you come to America. Things will be, but it's like what you are experiencing is not the way. God asked me to tell you. You are the next in line for testimony in Jesus' name. He said to me, I should tell you, there is going to be a great turnaround for you. What is the lesson we want to learn from here? Number one, men, they heard. Men does what? They heard. People heard what is not enough. Is that not true? If you have it insufficient, do you need to hoard? No. 
when people come to you in those days, when we were growing up, when people are coming and they, they notice that this food not, they, they, they not, they, hey, wait, 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 and they will quick put the thing under the chair. <laughs> you are welcome, sir. But when you go to a wealthy man, what happens? He is not running anywhere. Is that will he run? He say, hey, what would you like to eat? Even if he's eating rice, hey, a maker or whatever the name is, <laughs> go and prepare what <laughs> something for my friend. Is that not true? Hey, because he has more than enough to do what? That is where God is taking him. Men hoard, but God does what? He gives. Satan steals from people. Satan is a source of all the defeat and pain you will ever experience in life. Freedom from oppression and affliction does not come cheap. It does not come easy. It is not on a bed of roses. The devil wants to keep you perpetual in bondage. And that's why, for those of us who are in this country, you must begin to ask God, how can I break out, break forth from this system so that I can be what? Free. Whether you like it or not, where I'm coming from, there used to be political what? Political what do we have then? Oppression. Then when we got political independence, it turned to what? Economic what? <laughs> Oppression. Because if you don't get anything from these people, you don't get anything. Many of us here, even though we are now citizens, so politically, we are politically what? Correct. Is that not true? But economically, are we correct? No. We must get to the point where we are both political as well as what? We must. And let me tell you, it is possible for you to have a great turnaround. I say it is possible. It can be acquired. Don't let anybody tell you it is not possible. It is what? It is possible. It is possible for you to have peace, to be able to do whatever you... you it's possible to have, for you to have dominion. Have it the way you want it. If you want to sleep, you want to sleep. If you want to walk, you want to walk. If you don't want to do neither, and go on the sea to be playing what? Golf. All you need once in a while, you just check the account. What is the account doing? People who are investors, that's what they do. You don't see them in the office. They don't have time for the office. Most of us that are working, most of them are where? On the houses in their, what do you call it? Yach or yach or, how do you call it? Yach. You see? In fact, the way they think the thing is so smooth. <laughs> in their yach. And when they get there, it's a helicopter that will bring them there and take them away. You can get there, my brother. I say you can get there. You can get there. And you will get there in the name of Jesus. You will get there in the name of Jesus. But one thing is that you need God's intervention no matter the oppression. If you must make progress in life, you need God's intervention. If you must succeed, you need God's intervention. If you must arise and shine, you need what? God's intervention. If you must manifest the glory of God in this land, you need God's intervention. If you must enlarge, if you must, you know, turn around for the best, you need what? God's intervention. That's what the Bible says. They, they, they cry to who? To God. When God intervenes and visits a man, he never leaves him the way he met him. When Moses and Aaron appeared before who? Pharaoh. And said, let my people go. So that they may do what? Serve me. So that I may get honor over who? Pharaoh. Two reasons why God wants to give you a life, a great turnaround, is so that you will do what? Serve him. Number two, so that that problem you think is a problem in your life becomes what? He gives God. You know, that's what the Bible says. He said, when you praise God, he said, when you give thanks to him, when you tell him how great he is, he said, those things, people will see and they will give glory back to who? To God. I want you to know that it is possible. When God meets a man, he doesn't leave him the way he met him. For example, this great turnaround, as far as I know, and as God has said, Every hopeless situation, God will restore hope in the name of Jesus. Every
every sorrow over your life, God will replace it with joy in the name of Jesus. Failure will transform into success in the name of Jesus. You will move from shame to honor in the name of Jesus. Ah, weaknesses in your body will be exchanged for the strength of the almighty God. Ah, stumbling blocks becomes a stepping stone for you. He turns the past losses into future gains. That is what the Lord would do for you. You know one thing? I like to pray with you. My prayer for you, brethren, is that today I decree that every loss in your life is awaiting a divine touch. Have you fallen? You shall rise again. Your turnaround shall be it will far outweigh the losses you have recorded in life. God's plan for your life is very big. Your destiny, you have a robust, you know what I said? You have a robust destiny. Your destiny for turnaround will come to pass in the name of Jesus. Look, turn to your neighbor. Things can only get better for you. Ah, you will never know a better yesterday. Things can only get better for you in the name of Jesus. The Lord says you have before you a door of enlargement. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. But you know what? We must fight for what belongs to you. You must do what? Fight to take it. It is time for you to step out and take what God has promised you. Gideon built an altar unto the Lord and called it Jehovah Shalom. What is an altar? An altar is a place of connection between man and God. A place of prayer. A place where the action is. Isaiah 65, 24. Can we read it together? What happened to these people shouldn't have happened. But even though it has happened, God turned it into what? Great turnaround. Can we read it together? Isaiah 65, 24. And he said, it shall come to pass that before they do what? They call. Before they call, I will do what? Before you call today, God will answer you. And while they are still speaking, I will do what? I will hear. God is not moved by your complaining and murmuring. He is only moved by what? Prayer that is prayed to him. Genesis 32, 28. Look at what it says. It says we must prevail in prayer. And you must get spiritually violent. In life, do you know how we know losers and winners? Do you know how we know losers and winners? They are determined by how much they fight for their future. Today, all the land in America, it's not as if America owned everything. No. But their great-grandfather did what? They fought and took it over from some other people. Most of the parts of uh, Texas, hmm, they don't belong to them before. Is that not true? Even some parts of California, they don't they belong to this place. But some people did what? They said, no, we have if, you know, our children come in, we, and when they come, we want them to do what? To possess this. Now, today, what happened? The other people whose parents did not do anything, what happened today? Everybody now wants to get in. Is that not what? May your case never be like that. Ah, your children will not go elsewhere looking for what help. They will stay where they are. It is people who will be coming to look for help for them. And I pray that for you in the name of Jesus. Brethren, I want us to be upstanding. We want to pray. When David fought with Goliath in 1 Samuel 17, one would have thought he was fighting for Israel. No. He was fighting for his own life. Because when he fought for his own life and God was able to do something new, I want you to begin to thank God. Why don't you just appreciate him? Say, Father, I thank you. Because we are going to pray. Just thank him. Thank him. Thank the Lord. Magnify his name. Say, praise him. Bless him for his hand upon your life. For the great gift of Jesus. For the Holy Spirit. For the blood of the land. For turning sorrow into gladness. For turning your pain into victory. Thank him that you are alive today. Some of us traveled. But see what God has done. We came back. Some of us went out. You see in the snow yesterday. I was going from one place to the other. <laughs> still some people still had accidents. But one way or the other. God kept me. So you also went out. And God kept you. Why don't you just thank him? Say, Lord, I'm grateful. I'm thankful. You see, one major thing that will bring your turn around is gratitude to God. Even if you can't ask for any other thing, say, Lord, 
for all you have done in the past. I am grateful. I am grateful. I am grateful. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God for how far he has left you. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him all the praise. Give him praise. Give him all the praise. Give him all the honor. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. We worship you. We bless your name. We worship you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Now you're going to say, Lord, just like the children of Israel, they cry to God. Say, Lord, fight for me. Fight my battles. Lord, I know there are contention over this blessing over my life. But Lord, fight for me and give me victory. Why don't you talk to the Lord? So do what no man can do for me. Do for me what will secure my great turnaround. Lord, turn my story to glory. Change my story. Lift up my head. Raise me up, oh God. Cry to God. Be violent. Say, Lord, turn every disgrace into grace. Father, turn every struggles, ridicules, obstacles. Turn them into miracles. When we talk about great turnaround, we are talking about God's intervention. We are talking about God's miracle. Father, turn miracle. Turn it into miracle. Turn it into miracle. Lord, make me an object of admiration. Make me an object of blessing. Every altar of demotion. Every altar of ridicule. Father, let them be destroyed. In the name of Jesus. Pray for yourself. Pray for your children. Pray for your father. Pray for your mother. Pray that you will become untouchable to the enemies. The enemies will not be able to touch you. Say, touch not my anointed. Do my prophet no harm. Every spiritual embargo placed on my great turn around be consumed by fire in the name of Jesus. Father, let there be light. That the Jews said we should pray. Let there be light. Father, let there be light into everything that is causing discomfort in my life. Father, let there be light. Let every siege against my home, every siege against my marriage, every siege against my career, every siege against my hope. Lord, let them be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Let them be gone in the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. I want to say something so that you can pray with knowledge. What does it mean when we pray? Let every speed, every siege be gone. Let every siege be gone. You know what it means to be in siege? Go and ask Iran. Even though they are what is open, but they are under what? Siege. Economic siege. Nothing comes in, nothing goes out. And when that happens, you know it's a big problem. Is that not true? You have oil, but you can't sell it. Because there is a sanction that says anybody that does business with you, they are out. You are under siege. And that's why you see a lot of people doing what? Always carrying placard. Because life is unbearable for them. Now, when we say there is a siege in the life of a man, you know what you are telling God that this siege must be gone? You are telling God these following things. Number one, you are saying, God, oh Lord, step into the matter of my life. When you say, let siege be gone, you are saying, God, do what? Step into the matter of what? My life. Whatever my father, my mother, or whatever I must have gone through, me, oh, I'm not going to go through that again. Step into what? Into my, the matter of my life. You are saying, oh Lord, show concern about what I'm passing through. When you say, seek be gone, you say, God, show concern. Show concern. When you say, seek be gone, you are saying, oh Lord, do not watch me die in this problem. Do not allow this matter to overwhelm me. Look at what the Bible says in this morning when I was preaching. He was talking about, we have passed through fire. We are proud, but you brought us into a wealthy place. When you say, seek be gone, say, God, bring me into what? A wealthy place. 
Oh God, do not watch me and allow the enemy to subdue me. That is what you are saying when you say, siege be what? Be gone. When you say, siege be gone, you are saying, oh Lord, do something now. Enough is what? Enough. Look at Judges 6, 2 and 3. Judges 6, 2 and 3. And the hand of the Midian, the Bible says, prevailed over who? The children of Israel. You must pray this verse. Arise, O oh Lord. Let not man prevail over me. Psalm 9, verse 9. Say, Arise, O oh Lord. Do not let man prevail over me. Arise, O oh Lord. Do not let man prevail over me. Arise, O oh Lord. Do not let man prevail over me. Psalm 9, verse 9. Arise, O oh Lord. Do not let man prevail over me. Get their spirit. Get their spirit. Tell God. Bible says, When they have sown, the Midian will come, they will destroy the harvest. Lord, arise. Scatter every evil association against my turnaround. Scatter every evil association against my health. Scatter every evil association against my academic, against my career. Some of you, you are here. Some people are planning behind you. Say, so when you get to the office tomorrow, we will see. Lord, scatter. Scatter every evil association. Scatter it in the name of Jesus. 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 Every power targeting my harvest. Every power targeting my turnaround. Let them be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Ah, Lord, set me free from long time bondage. Set me from, free from long time problem. Set me free from prolonged delay. Set me free from prolonged delay. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Isaiah 65, 21 to 23. We are going to pray that prayer. Isaiah 61, 65, 21 to 23. The Bible says you shall do what? Can we have it? Isaiah 65, 21 to 23. Isaiah 61. Nobody is there. Okay, open your Bible since this one is not responding. Isaiah 65, 21. Can somebody read it if you find it? They shall build houses. Look, let me tell you something. If there is one major thing God wants you to do, is to do what? To build houses. In case you have not built, you are the next in line. He said, and they shall build what? Houses. You will... He didn't say, and they shall build house. Oh. He didn't say house. Because I know some of us, our brain cannot take ah, I don't even have one. You are saying houses. But that is what God is saying. You will build what? Houses. Now, when you build it, you will do what? I have a friend up till today. He stays in married land or whatever. Eh? He built house. Oh. But ever since I knew him in life, it is that two bedroom. So one day when I travel, is there anything wrong with you? You have built a house. He has spent 40, about 35 years, if not 40 years, in that house. Rented apartment. In fact, the day I even asked, did you buy this house? He said, no. He said, I'm still renting. Ah. No. That will not be your own case. When you build houses, you do what? You will stay inside. You will not be afraid. Ah. Uh -uh. Nothing will, will make you to be afraid. Now, and they shall do what? plant vineyard and they will do what? You will eat the fruit of your labor. Everything God has planned for you, nobody will take your place. In the name of Jesus. Verse 23, look at what it says. And they, do, they will do what? They shall not build and another will do what? They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my... In other words, you will live long. Ah, I said you will live long. My elect shall long enjoy the work of their hand. Verse 23, look at what it says there. It says, they shall not labor. Ah, every, your, all your labor will be rewarded. I say in this land, all your labor will be rewarded. For they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord. And their offspring is of who? Of me. Now, the prayer you are going to pray, say, Father, I will plant and I will eat the fruit. I will build houses. I will inhabit them. Yes, in the name of Jesus, I will long enjoy the work of my hand. 
pray, 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 pray. Uh, pray, I will enjoy the works of my hand. Nobody will take my place. Uh -uh, nobody will replace me. Nobody will replace me. I will not be replaced. I will not be replaced. Due to ill health, I will not be replaced. I will not be, re I will not be sacked. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Because of time. There are some cases the Lord showed to me while I was preparing. Number one, he said there is foundational battle waging war seriously against your turnaround. You are here. You know it. That who you ought to have become is not, you are not even near it. You know it in your heart. That is one case. I'm not going to ask you to come out, but just know that this is what God is saying. Number two, what God told me is that someone boasted to you openly. He boasted openly. He said, and look at what he said. The Bible, he, the Bible said, I mean, the Lord said, he openly boasted that you won't succeed. He said, you won't make it. He said, you may go to America, you may go anywhere. He said, you can go very far, but you won't go fast. That you will remain just on one spot. That you will stagnate. That is the second thing somebody said. The third thing that the Lord spoke to me is this. Concerning somebody here. He said, he said something. He said, you are experiencing terrible dream attack. Anytime you dream about something. Something good that will have come to you on the platter of gold. Suddenly becomes what? It will just. Maybe it's a contract. Maybe it's a pregnancy. Maybe it's one thing or the other. Once you dream, I used to have a lady in my place of work where I work. I used to work with the Lagos State Government. I mean, she's beautiful. She's, I mean, everything. But she would tell me that, do you know what? Anytime he dreams that somebody is having a relationship with her in a dream and it's not her husband, the pregnancy comes down. And look, she did that for over 25 years. One day I told her, I said, you must be desperate. Wherever that fellow is coming from, you can take a decision and say, no, never. I take authority over you. And you find that the, th the thing will disappear. Now, the last one is this. That is what the Lord says. I mean, that's the second to the last. I said, there is an invisible power that is always pulling you down. You want to climb. That invisible, you can't see it. But you just find that every other person, they are running, they can do things the way they like. You understand? But when it goes to you, something will just be doing, will be pulling you. Or when you dream, it will remind you of, I mean, when you were still in your small panties, when you were small, it will take you back to what? Back to when you were nothing. The last thing the Lord told me is that there is somebody that is that in spite of your brilliance, you are brilliant. You, are, you have what it takes to make it in life, to prosper in everything you are doing. But it's like you are having nothing to truly show for all that God wants to have. If you are one of those people, please all eyes closed. All I want us to do is just, you know, when a little child does like what is he saying? Help me. All you need to do is just stretch your hand before God and say, God, I know there are battles, there are contention over my turnaround. But Lord, carry me. Help me. Sustain me. Fight my battles. What the Lord told the Israelites, he said, the Egyptian that you see today, ah, you will see them what? No more. Why don't you stretch forth your hand and say, Lord, send help to me. Pray. Pray. Today, God, arise, break the bars of iron. Lord, break the fetters of brass. Lord, dark power supervising my turn around. Lord, scatter them in the name of Jesus. Ah, people have boasted that you won't succeed. Lord, it will be after and beyond after their dead body. I will succeed. I will make it. I will live in good health in the name of Jesus. All invisible power always pulling me down. I reject you. I resist you. In the name of Jesus, I will progress. I will make it in life. In the name of Jesus, 
in spite of your brilliance, in spite of your academic prowess, you are having nothing to show. I will find something to show for it. In the name of Jesus. Ah, Father, break every spell. Break every enchantment walking against my turnaround. Break every spell. Break every enchantment walking against my turnaround. In the name of Jesus. Ah, God, vindicate me. Give me quick justice. Give me vindication. Give me quick justice. Give me vindication. In the name of Jesus. Ah, Father, give me a new song. Double for all the shame that I've gone through. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Finally, before I give the microphone, Psalm 138, verse 8. Can we please all look into it? You are going to pray. The Bible said something in Philip. It said, He that begun what? Uh, God has begun a good work. He is the one who will do what? He will perfect it. But look, let's read this one. 138. It says, The Lord will do what? He will perfect all that concern. The prayer you are going to pray say, Lord, arise. Complete what you have started in my life. Complete what you have started in my business. Complete what you have started in the life of my child. Complete what you have started in this health. No. Body, you are not permitted to be sick. Ah, complete what you have started. In my, I will make progress. I will succeed. I, I will be one of those people who will break boundaries. Who will break limit. Ah, in the name of Jesus. Lord, complete what you have started. Complete it. Complete it. Complete it. Complete it. In Jesus' name we have prayed. You are here, you have not given your life to Christ. One major thing that God is expecting to you is to give your life. See, turn around does not come. I told the first, is it the yesterday I was here till a little bit before I left, before I went home. And there was this fellow who came and um, when he came he was asking, he was hungry, he was this and that and I said, no problem. But he said, there is a girl that is, uh, and I told him, I told him, I said, uh -uh, we cannot continue in sin. And think what? Grace will abound. And I told him, it's not easy for God to turn your situation around. You shouldn't be going everywhere begging for bread. He said, I've been old now. I've been, I was young, now I'm old. He said, I've never seen who? The righteous forsaken. Or who? His seed begging for bread. This fellow will bought this place from his own father. Now what I'm telling you is this. I want you to know one thing. That breakthrough, turn around comes to people who have surrendered their life. You know one thing? When this fellow went to Shiloh, he didn't go to see the man of God. You realize that? When Anna went, he went to see who? The God of the Shiloh. Many of us, why we don't have a turnaround? And I'm telling you, this is what God told me. You come to church just to see people. Just to say, hey, how are you? Long time. It was, uh, we didn't see you last week. No. When you come, it's a serious business. When you come, you come to see the God. There was a lady who was sick in Britain. Very, very sick. They've done everything. He said, take me to Nigeria, to the redemption camp. He said, I don't need to see that the Jew. He said, I have come to see the God of the general verse. But all I need is, let me be able to hold where? The altar. Do you know the sickness vanished? Do you know it vanished? Completely. Why? Because he wasn't coming for the crumbs. He wasn't coming for the people. He was coming for who? The God that makes things happen. The God of great turn around. The God of miracle. The God that healed. The God that... That is what he came from. Look at that woman who was what? Issue of blood. He said, mm, me, I don't even want to introduce myself to Jesus. He said, all I want is to what? If only I can touch what? 
I think I'm done. Do you know that if you come to church with the intention that you are coming to meet the bishop of your soul, your life will always be transformed every time you come. But if you come just to, well, show off, let them see the new shoe, let them see the new attire in town, uh, you will just go the way you came. But that is not the will of God for you. You are here, you have not given your life to Christ. I like to pray with you. Because if you come to this God, I'm telling you, ah, turn around will never be far from you. Delay, things you think will never happen. You will see them, they will just be happening. Are you here? You have not given your life to Christ. I like to pray with you. That is what I'm saying. I like to pray with you. Because if you don't accept him, it's a problem. Is there anybody here? I like to pray. Okay. If we not, I want to pray the final prayer. Can you please stretch forth your hand? Just like I told you. Not to me. To who? To God. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, as your representative, I pray for your children. I decree that the mountains and the problem that is making it difficult for them, Lord, to be able to have great turnaround, let them melt away in the name of Jesus. Cause them to move from shame to glory, from sorrow to joy. Ah, they become a victor, not a victim. They will be more than conqueror, not a captive. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you. You will move from the realm of faith to even a greater realm of faith in the name of Jesus. You will never be fearful again in the name of Jesus. Ah, you shall not be defeated. I say you will not be defeated. You shall be celebrated. You will go forward in life. You will go higher in life. You will go upward in life. In the name of Jesus. I decree every fountain of discomfort, whatever the sickness is called, ah, I pray for you. The Bible says, himself took, he took, he took all our infirmities. Every sickness in your body, ah, walking against your turnaround, I cause them in the name of Jesus. I cancel every appointment with sorrow. I cancel every appointment with tragedy. I cancel every appointment with death in the name of Jesus. Now, I speak peace into your body. Peace into your home. Peace into your business. There are some of you you are owing. Ah, you will be celebrated. Your debt will be paid off. Is it not here? Last Sunday, somebody came out. 196,000 student loan was forgiven. She gave a testimony here. Some of us that would think it is just what I can do by myself. No. God will cancel your debt in the name of Jesus. I say he will cancel your debt in the name of Jesus. May the Lord assist you beyond personal ability. May it be well with you. In Jesus name we pray. Praise the name of the Lord. Can we shout a big hallelujah to the almighty God?